You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Rodrians for our Black and White Live. We're going to do week 12 NFL picks. The other day, I dropped the Thanksgiving Day picks. I was 2 and 1. Uh, I did pick the Lions to beat the Bears, and once again, the Lions got their guts ripped out at the very end of the game. Dan Campbell somewhere is still on the ground crying. I'm a huge fan of Dan Campbell, but that Lions team is just devoid of talent. As if this is the first time you've come to the podcast, make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, We are available on Spotify, CastBox, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and of course, if this is your first time on Black and White Live, make sure you hit subscribe here on YouTube. And to all the regular watchers, thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, so I did have the Raiders over the Cowboys. Uh, had a feeling with the Cowboys' lack of playmakers, um, C.D. Lamb and, um, of course, Amari Cooper having been out because of the Wuhan virus. I just had a feeling it was going to be tough to score points. And then the Raiders made it tougher when Darren Waller went out of the game for them. It got very interesting, very entertaining game, actually. Uh, And also, I had the Bills over the Saints. I did have that game much closer than it ended up being, though. Uh, So, as it seemed that the, the Bills kind of got their offense worked out, I don't love the fact that they're so Josh Allen centric on that team uh they've got no real running game to speak of and really and truly if you look at the bills and their playmakers i'm not overly impressed there either they've got they've got stefan diggs and they've got cole beasley but um diggs is really the only true threat outside of josh allen on that team uh far as offense goes uh boy if he had a good tight end they might really, really be able to do something with that offense. So, kind of makes you wonder if Brian Dayball's stock is going to be dropping uh, as a potential head coach. He was a hot name last year and did not get a job. All right, let's go. This is going to be week 12. This is going to be the 12 o'clock games, Central Time, 1 o'clock Eastern. Buccaneers against the fighting Carson Wentz's. The Colts, that's right. If you have not been watching the in-season HBO Hard Knocks with the Colts, I highly recommend it. I think it's – I've only seen one episode, but what I saw was really good. Uh, It's amazing how much um, sort of getting a behind-the-scenes on Carson Wentz kind of makes you like him as a person a little bit more. Uh, And, of course, Frank Wright, uh, I like him a lot. I like him a lot. Uh, religious guy, you don't see, you don't see that very often. Uh, just being so open about the uh, belief set, and I was impressed by that. You know, in this day and time, you just don't see that a whole lot. Okay, so we'll have Tom Brady in this game. Uh, Gronk is back, and uh, I do think the, um, I do think the. Uh, uh, Buccaneers miss something not having Antonio Brown uh, around. I I actually think uh, Brady's two favorite go tos on this team is Gronk and Antonio Brown. Uh, so that said, the Colts are on a roll. They're six and five. You know the odd thing about the NFL the last two years, last year and this year is is that the home field advantage, if you haven't noticed, is gone. It's disappeared. Uh, It's really strange. That used to be such a big deal in the NFL. But the last two or three years, the home field advantage is just uh, basically non-existent. Uh, That being said, all that being said, I'm actually picking the Colts in this game. I am. I'm going with Carson Wentz, Frank Wright, in Indy against Tom Brady. I think the the Bucks look a little off to me on offense. Uh, Tom Brady actually is probably, uh, last time I looked at betting lines, uh, I believe he is the front runner for the MVP right now. Uh, on, on some, 
yeah, some betting entities out there anyway. Uh, but I've got I've got the Colts winning 27-24 over the Bucks. I know they're defending Super Bowl champs. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is running all over everybody. I understand the Bucks got a good uh, defense, but I just have a feeling the Colts keep this train rolling with uh, Jonathan Taylor. He is an absolute beast. Oh, the Titans at the Fighting Mac Joneses. The New England Patriots, who look eerily similar to the 2001 New England Patriots. It's unbelievable. This week, Matt uh, Matthew Slater came out and said that um, it's unbelievable how Mac Jones has just slid right in to the Patriots. He said not only as a player, but just uh, the Patriots' culture. Uh, it was like uh, Legos. It snapped right in with Mac Jones and... Um, He's looking more and more like a veteran out there. Uh, great completion percentage. The Titans. Oh, Ryan Tannehill threw four interceptions. All of a sudden, you would think it was Tannehill with Adam Gase again. Um, look, I, I do think that's a little bit overplayed. But the Titans, we know their offense revolves around a running game, and Derrick Henry is not, not around. He is out, of course, with the foot injury. I am going Patriots. Foxborough is still a, t a tough place to play. I'm going Patriots in this game. 24, uh, Titans 14. I think it's going to be a struggle. Patriots look great. They're going to end up being 8-4. and four, And I would not sleep on the Patriots. By the way, A.J. Brown is, I believe, headed to injured reserve last I checked. Next up, we got the Steelers at the Bengals. Uh, this should be interesting. The Bengals already beat the Steelers once this year. And uh, the Bengals are 6-4. and four. The Steelers are 5-4-1. and one. Um, I don't care. Ben Roethlisberger is playing. He's back uh, coming off the uh, Wuhan virus outage. And, uh, of course, he was back last week. Uh, playing, I, I just, uh, I don't know about the Bengals. They don't look like the same Bengals team they looked like uh, three or four weeks ago. Uh, they, look, they look a little bit like the league might have figured them out, just a little bit. And I'm going to say this, this is going to end up being a split for the season. I'm going Steelers 17, Bengals 16, in a squeaker, some kind of a last-second field goal situation for the Steelers to win it. I just uh, I just have a feeling uh, Big Ben is going to step up like you would expect a, a veteran quarterback to do. Carolina Panthers at the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Good Lord, no. Oh, uh, that's a that's a shout out to Ross Tucker, um, who likes to sing uh, so many different team names. I don't know why. So anyway, Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey, at the Miami Dolphins, Tua is playing. Uh, a lot of people don't know that Tua actually leads the league among NFL quarterbacks in completion percentage. In the second half of games this year, uh, he's about 64% in the first half, but he jumps up to 72% in the second half of games. Two is playing very well in the second half of games. I'm going to say it doesn't matter. I think uh, the Panthers are going to ride Cam Newton. I think he's going to have a big game. He's figuring out that offense pretty quickly. And, of course, Christian McCaffrey is back if – Look, if either Cam or McCaffrey was out of this game, I'd go with the Dolphins, but I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, by the way, that will make them 6-6. Six and six. The NFC is wide open for that last uh, wild card spot. We're going to go Dolphins 24, Carolina Panthers 27 in that game. Next up, we've got the Eagles 
at the Giants. The Giants got rid, made a huge upgrade this week by firing Jason Garrett. My God, one of the most painful offenses in all of football to have to watch. They make you want to poke your eyeballs out. They're so boring. Daniel Jones looks like he has regressed two seasons. Thanks, Jason Garrett. Uh, Coach Clapp is now gone. Uh, I got to tell you, he made you uh, feel like you had the clap um, as long as he was the offensive coordinator for the Giants. I mean, he, uh, yeah, he had Giants fans uh, taking penicillin and scratching all over the state of New York. Well, Jason Garrett is gone. Thank God. However, I don't think it matters. The Eagles have absolutely, positively gained an identity on offense. They are running wild on the NFL, and because of that, they are putting up points all over the place. Jordan Howard is out, but Boston Scott and Miles Sanders will be playing. Jalen Hurts is running all over the league. They have got a three- or four-headed monster in with a running attack, and I just don't see the G-men slowing this down. Don't look now. Dallas Cowboys, the Eagles are coming in that division right now. They're five and six, a true offensive identity. They're controlling the ball, and they are running the ball down everybody's throats. Uh, I'm going Eagles in this game. 30, Giants, 14. It's going to be a blowout. I don't care if it is in New York. It's going to be ugly. I've got the Atlanta Falcons at the Fighting Urban Meyer Lap Dances. That's right, the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars have shown a little sign of life since Urban Meyer decided to have a co-ed lap dance. For him up in Ohio, honest to God, I don't think that has anything to do with it. Um, Although I do wonder if this team in some part didn't rally around Urban. They've got two victories since that happened. And I got to tell you, the Atlanta Falcons are downright painful. I can't believe they have four wins. I can't believe they're four and six. Uh, Calvin Ridley is still gone. And uh, Cordell Patterson will be back, it looks like. James Robinson is banged up. And, of course, the best player on the field for the Falcons is Kyle Pitts right now. I don't know what's going on with Matt Ryan. The Atlanta Falcons offensive line is putrid. It is horrible. I mean, they literally got waxed back there by the New England Patriots defense. Uh, the Jaguars have actually flashed on defense this year. And um, people forget, just a couple of weeks ago, they beat the Bills. I'm actually going Jaguars in this game. Yeah, uh, if you watch this game, you might want to keep a puke bucket handy because it's possible you're going to be extremely nauseated. It is going to be pathetic. But I'm going Jaguars. I'm going Jaguars 14 Falcons 10. I mean, the Fal- the Falcons are just putrid behind that offensive line. Uh, so, who knows? I-, I-, I thought Urban Meyer was an automatic, I'm out, back to college after the season. I'm starting to wonder. Okay, so next up is the Jets at the Texans. And I got to tell you, it's kind of odd that uh, Joe Flacco tests positive for the Wuhan virus. And Mike White can't play. And miraculously, Zach Wilson is just ready to go. I thought he was injured. I thought he was injured. I thought he was, I thought there was something going on there. Look, I'm a 49ers fan, and I actually had some, some confidence in Robert Sala going to the New York Jets. But it's like something happens when you walk in that building. And all of a sudden, I mean, it just, uh, I don't know if it's a soul-sucking experience or what, uh, but all of a sudden, Robert Sala's uh, coaching like a New York Jets coach. Uh, Of course, the Texans are also a dumpster fire, but they're a dumpster fire that got Tyrod Taylor back. 
a couple of weeks ago. And the fact is, they've looked pretty good with Tyrod this year. Uh, I'm going Texans in this game. It's not going to be some kind of offensive explosion. I look for the Jets to be anemic on offense. Uh, the Texans aren't going to be much better, they're, but they're going to be better than the Jets in this thing. Let's go 20, uh, Texans 20, New York Jets 7. I'll say Zach Wilson accidentally throws a touchdown in that game. Chargers at Broncos. Um, man, the AFC, the AFC West is pretty tight right now. Um, the Raiders got a win. The Broncos are five and five. The Chargers are six and four. Uh, the Chiefs look like they may have finally got their crap back together. Um, you're going into mile high. The weather is cooling off. I'm going to go Broncos in this game. I am. I think they're going to give Herbert some trouble back there. They're going to put some pressure on him. It's real tough to win in Denver uh, this time of the year when when weather starts cooling off. Uh, you've got the thin air. It, it may end up being a field goal uh, parade up there. And I'm going Broncos 24, Chargers 21. And now what looks like the marquee game of the week, the L.A. Rams going to the COVID toe Aaron Rodgers-led Packers. Uh, of course, he doesn't actually have COVID toe, but he he reeled in the mainstream media with his COVID toe revelation this week. It was hilarious to see. They all bought in hook, line, and sinker uh, to Aaron Rodgers, uh, believing he had COVID toe. Uh, he didn't. He does have a fractured toe, and we know... Uh, there's a lot of big dudes, a lot of nasty dudes on the LA Rams defensive line, uh, coming in against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Uh, they do have Devontae Adams, uh, still, but there's not just a ton of weapons. Otherwise, uh, Aaron Jones is still flashing from time to time. Everything. Everything in me in this game tells me I should pick the L.A. Rams, but I'm not going to. I'm picking Aaron Rodgers at home. Uh, I think he finds some way to pull it off. Some of that magical Aaron Rodgers action, even with a bad toe. Uh, but I don't know that this is going to be just some massive offensive explosion. I know it's cold as hell up in Wisconsin right now. L.A. team coming in. I'm going Packers 24, Rams 17 in that game. That is actually considered barely an upset. And now we get to my team playing at home where they have almost no home field advantage for whatever reason. The Niners struggle mightily at home. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. The Vikings are 5-5. Five and five. The 49ers are 5-5. Five and five. And this is kind of uh, – this is nearly a loser leaves, leaves town match. Uh, it's close. It's close. Um, they're fighting for that last playoff spot. The Niners look like they've gotten some of their crap together. The Vikings look like they've gotten some of their crap together. Uh, Jimmy G's been pretty tough out there. Uh, Debo Samuel looks like one of the best playmakers in all of football. Kyle Shanahan finally got his head out of his ass – Whatever personal vendetta he had against uh, Brandon Ayuk seems to be gone, and Brandon Ayuk looks great for the 49ers. He should have never been missing games this year. Good Lord. If you hadn't checked out that uh, article from The Athletic on Kyle Shanahan, you may want to go look that up. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm going 49ers in this, and I do think it is going to be close. Real close. 49ers 24, Vikings 23, last second field goal. Uh, Vikings go to 5 and 6. Niners go to 6 and 5. Uh, I don't know. It may not be a loser leave town, but it, it sort of feels like it. Uh, in that uh, last wild card, I guess you're not really out, but then you're going to run into tiebreakers and things like that. And if the Niners win, they'll have the advantage there. 
By the way, I do think the Vikings have got a pretty good team. Browns at Ravens. And Baker Mayfield is supposed to play in this game. He looks awful. He looks absolutely awful out there. Uh, he's beat to hell. He's one tough little son of a bitch. There's no doubt about that. He's got all kinds of injuries. I'm really shocked Stefanski has not set Baker at this point. Uh, it's pretty surprising. I mean, he's getting beat up. The fans are booing him uh, in Cleveland. It's gotten ugly. And look, I'm pretty surprised they're booing him, knowing that their quarterback is getting out there under the circumstances that he is. Um, I would have to think Case Keenum is least is at least as good as Baker Mayfield right now, considering all the injuries that Baker's got. I know a lot of people would argue maybe Case Keenum's better than Baker anyway. I don't know about that necessarily, but who knows? Lamar Jackson in Baltimore. This is pretty easy for me. I'm going Ravens 30, Browns 17. I think this is going to be a bloodbath. Um, the Ravens, they're going to throw up some points. I know there's Miles Garrett over there. Uh, but I think Baker is just too beat down to put up enough points for them to make this too awful competitive against the Baltimore Ravens. And once again, there's a total and complete stinker of a game for Monday night. Monday night football, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this game. The Seattle Seahawks have underachieved this year. Perennial playoff team for the last several years against the um, Washington football team. They're four and six. They're playing in Washington. You know, Russell Wilson, Pete Carroll, Normally, I would look at that and be like, you know what? I'm going with Seattle. That's pretty easy. I love looking at the uh, coach and quarterback's combination situation. But I don't think Russell Wilson's too happy up there. I think we're going to see a big stink in the offseason for Russell Wilson to get his ass out of there. I still have this odd feeling about Russell Wilson to the New Orleans Saints. I've had that feeling for a while. I think Sean Payton would like to get a hold of of Russell. There's no guarantee Pete Carroll's keeping his job up there. Man, if Pete Carroll loses that job, um, he is going to get hired in college at record speed if he chooses to go back. And oddly enough, USC is open again. I'm just saying. That's awfully strange. Uh, what a fantastic story that would end up being if that ends up happening. I'm going the fighting Taylor Eidenke's there. Uh, I'm going to go Washington 17, Seattle Seahawks 14. Uh, this could be putrid, but you can watch the Manning cast on ESPN2. If you choose to consume this game, maybe there'll be some good interviews. I still like the regular broadcast because I like to hear the breakdown. And, uh, frankly, I actually think that uh, Lewis Riddick and Brian Greasy and Steve Levy are pretty good in the booth. They long-term won't keep them in there, and that's sort of a shame. They've been pretty good at their job. Um, of course, I'm a Michigan fan, so Brian Greasy, you know, went to Michigan, was a pretty good NFL quarterback, not a great NFL quarterback, but pretty good. Uh, good long-term Pro quarterback, let's put it that way. Um, didn't set the world on fire, but flashed at times and got some wins. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for week 12. Bringing this back after it's been gone for so long. Before the end of the season, I mean, we used to always pick games every week on a live stream. but That was before black and white sports blew up. And... Um, now I decided to bring it back uh, for the live channel, uh, the live YouTube channel, and for the folks here on the podcast. Tell me what you think. Make sure you hit subscribe. Black and White Live, Black and White Sports, Black and White Sports, the podcast. And we are over on Newsbreak, Black and White Sports, Texas edition. We cover exclusively Texas sports over there if you've got the Newsbreak app. 
Make sure you follow us there as well. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.